Hello, this is Karen Yancey with Online Learning Services from the College of St. Rose, and I am going to show you how to convert a PowerPoint to a video, MP4, and how you can upload that to TechSmith Relay, which is a media library application that you can access via the web. I recommend using the Chrome browser when you um, go into TechSmith Relay. You would go to strohs.techsmithrelay.com to get to the web application. And first of all, the thing to do is to open up your PowerPoint program on your computer. Um, PowerPoint, remember, is not a web application. It's just a standard computer application. And you would open your PowerPoint presentation. Now, you go to File and select Export. Once you get to Export, go to the Create a Video button, and you'll see that you have choices here with the drop-down menus. I typically use a standard size, 480, but you can choose a higher detail um, video files that you can create. Um, the smallest up through medium, large, and largest. I'm going to select 640 by 480, which is the standard. And you can select this drop down menu. And if you have recorded timings and narrations, you can select this button here. It's grayed out here, but you will see a bold um, button here. You can also record timings and narrations if you want, um, but you would simply select which one you want uh, because some people do have uh, pre recorded audio on their PowerPoints. Um, the timings are frequently already set in a PowerPoint slide, or you can manipulate those timings to be several seconds longer if you want. And you can uh, include timings to up to, I think, 16 minutes and 40 seconds. That's a long time to stay on one slide, but that is an option. Um, I would suggest maybe three minutes. Uh, to stay on the slide. And then you would press create video. Now it's going to ask you where do you want to put it. I'm going to tell it to put it um, on my desktop in this case. And then I'm going to name it um, testing. Okay. And you can see it's an MPEG 4 video. And then I press save. Okay, new video. Now you will see at the very bottom here of the PowerPoint application, it says creating video and it's the name of the video. You'll see that it is, there's a progress bar down here. When this bar is black, it's complete. It has finished rendering into a video. Um, this X tells it to cancel, um, and you can see now that there's a little bit of gray here to, to show that there is progress. It takes a while for a large PowerPoint to render into a video, so patience is required. <laughs> now, I am going to cancel this because it, it could take uh, quite a number of minutes. And then... I'm going to show you, once you do have your video on your computer hard drive, you will go to uh, you'll, the web application, TechSmith Relay, and you'll go to Create. And there's the drop-down menu. You'll go to Upload Media, and you'll, you can drag and drop the file in, or you can select the file to upload. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select the file through my computer um, um, let's see. I'm going to go to book. Here we go. One of my screencasts, and I'll select one of them, and then I press open, and you'll see that it is uploading to Relay. Usually when it's uploading to Relay, it doesn't take long, 
but it depends on the traffic during the day. If there's a lot of people using the, uh, the relay, it could take a while. So now you'll see that I have my relay video in my library. One thing you can do when you're uploading a media file is that you can actually upload more than just videos. You can upload images such as PNGs and JPEGs and GIFs. Um, they need to have a minimum height and width of 200 pixels, so they can be quite large. This is a minimum height, not a maximum. Now, if you're in Relay and you don't have a uh, PowerPoint with audio recordings, you just have a PowerPoint and you want to record your lecture using that PowerPoint, you can open your PowerPoint on your computer and you can launch capture. Oh, but I can't. Um, what you would do is oh, um, a, a record button will appear here and you press record and you can delineate the area of the screen you want to record. Yeah. Now, af after that, you bring forward, you bring forward your PowerPoint. Let's see, press, you press record and it counts down three, two, one. And then bring forward your application window that you want to make the presentation in. Go to presentation and you would, this, this has recordings, so, but you would record and then move on to the next slide. And then this is the video that will appear on, um, and it's going to ask you, do you want to play it to see if it's, if you want to keep it? And then you would go down to upload to relay this button here. So my, um, I have a problem with capture. I can do everything else, but my computer is not that new. And as a consequence, I had to, it sent me a message to upload Mac OS or something. I have to update, update my operating system. And yeah. I couldn't do that because everybody was closed. So I couldn't go to the Apple store and update my system because I had to actually purchase something. And um, so I can't use Capture. Yes, you do have to have a fairly recent version of uh, the operating systems to be able to use the screen capture um, tool in Relay. If you have an up-to-date iDevice, such as a very recent iPad, you can use their application um, called uh, TechSmith Capture. Uh, and it is, you can screen capture using iDevices, iPhones. It, so there are mobile options as well if you have a more recent mobile device. I have a recent iPhone. Okay. And you can get into Relay um, using the browser on your mobile device. There are some limitations, but it will, the screen will look like this. Mm -hmm. You will have um, various options to manage your videos in the um, application that you've downloaded to your phone. So. All right, well, thank you very much. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. So I was going to show you a, a, an image that I uploaded to my library and I attached a video, or I'm sorry, a question to it. Let's see, which one was it? I think it was this one. This is an image that I uploaded to Relay. And you can see that I've attached a quiz to it. Um, so you would go into the quizzing button here at the bottom to edit your quiz questions or remove a quiz. So what I'm gonna show you next is how to integrate a Relay piece of media into your Canvas course. So I'm going to go to my Canvas, um, my Canvas sandbox course. Let's try that. Uh, 
All right, and I'm going to close this. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Stop back. There we go. Now, in my in my sandbox course, I'm going to make an assignment. One thing I would recommend is that when you want your students to view a video, make it an assignment because it will go into the grade book and you can see viewing analytics to see who's been viewing the video and how much of it they viewed. You do not have to make that grade part of the grade book um, because you can tell Canvas to not include that uh, in their final total. So the first thing you would do is go to assignments. And you click on add assignment, the, the yellow button at the top. And you would name it. And um, for points, you could say not graded. Um, or if you say points, you can say do not count this assignment towards the final grade. Those are two options you can have if you don't want it to, in, it, to calculate into their grades. Um, then you go to external tool, find, and you go into TechSmith Relay. That will take you to your Relay library where I have several videos. I will attach this media and it's gonna ask you, do you want it from TechSmith Relay again? And you say, yes, I do. Now um, you can go to save and publish or just save. And now you can see that your assignment, it has loaded to your assignment, to your Canvas course. You can get analytics on who viewed. And since this is new, you, there's no analytics. But you can also add quiz questions. Right here in through Canvas, you can do this. You would go to add new question. It's going to ask you, is this the point on the timeline you want? Because you can't move it. So I'll say yes. Um, and I'll add my question. And then you would add an answer and select that as the correct answer. And then add another choice as, an, as the wrong answer. And you would go up to the top and press save quiz. Now I can play. And now on this part of the timeline, I'll add a new question. So you can see that I've added a question at the beginning and then question further into the timeline. And I'll put a question there and add a choice. I'll say five, whoops. And then an alternate answer. And now I'm gonna go up to save quiz. Saving this changes, okay, yes, I will continue. And now I have two questions on my quiz timeline or on my video timeline. Is now I go back to video. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Did you have a question? Yeah. Karen, um, is multiple choice the option? You can choose. Uh, there are other question formats you can select from. And what's the, what's the, what's the issue or how, what's the rationale for, for uh, which one to choose in this program? So let's go back in and I'll show you quizzing. Okay, add questions. Okay, I'm going to press. Okay, so I'm going to select right here to add a new question. Mm -hmm. You can choose fill in the blank, free response, multiple choice, and true false. Now, multiple choice and true false are automatically graded because you're already, you're telling the computer ahead of time what the correct answers are. Right. Free response is like an essay question and, and fill in the blank is also, you, you have to grade it yourself. You have right. to um, in live person grade it. Right. So it depends on how much checking in you want to do. Okay. So, um, but, but you do have choices. 
that was that was what I wanted to know is if, um, in teaching graduate students, um, they very rarely do fill in the blank multiple choice. Often it is free. And so I just want to make sure that that option was available. Thank you. Free response. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go out. Now we did this through Canvas, but we can go in and do the same thing in our relay library. I can select the video that I want to add a question to or add a quiz to through Relay as well and not just through the Canvas connection. Um, you're, you're doing the same thing. You just go to the, oh, sorry. I'm going to select the place on the timeline. So add questions. Okay, All right, add questions. Now, I'm going to select at one minute in, then I'm, that's where I'm going to add my question. Okay, and I'll add in a question, hi, and add an answer choice, that's five, and then add another answer choice, and now save quiz. So you see there are two ways you can create quizzes. I prefer to do them in Relay because the, the windows are larger, but if you want to do them through the portal that you open in Canvas, that's also an option. Um, and you can add feedback if you want, uh, automatic feedback for if there's an incorrect answer or if there's a correct answer. Um, you can tell the quiz to do something after if something, if there's a certain action, such as the incorrect answer, it, you can tell the quiz to jump to a, a previous point on the timeline so the student can review that part of the video. Or you can tell the quiz to take the student to a resourcing a URL, which is a educational resource, such as a website that can fill in, fill the, fill in their gap, their learning gaps. So, or you can tell it just to continue along with the quiz or with the video. There are different actions you can tell Canvas to take or Relay to take. So I'm going to X out of this and that is pretty much it. That's how you would convert a video, to, uh, a PowerPoint to video, how, to, how you would upload it to Relay and how you would connect it to your course in Canvas. Um, I'm going to stop recording right now. Let's see, and thank you for watching. <laughs>